Okay, Tandy. Yes. Ready when you are, as they say. Should I put my glasses on now? Never be without my you ain't yeah. yes, yes, yes. What's up, woman? Hey, <laughs> who you? Who you? What's your name? What's your name? Answer my question. I'm Luvo. Luvo. Yes. What does Luvo mean? Luvo means opinion. Opinion. Yeah. So you have opinions. Oh, boy. I have yeah. plenty. Boy, have have plenty. Have <laughs> I have plenty. I guess you in the right place then. <laughs> yes, thank you. Let me not. That's let me not good. bother Lu- Lu- thank you so much. Luvo. He'll just keep on talking. <laughs> Well, I'm a cereal yapper. A cereal yapper? <laughs> oh, man. That is, uh, wow. Enjoy. Uh, my kind cool. of people, my tribe. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank Let you. me Thank see. You. Oh, here's a good level. All right. Perfect. I'm there. Um, I left the, the key, the tag, but uh, you probably won't need it. Okay. Is it for the door? Yeah. Okay. No, 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 but for, uh, for outside. Okay. Tandy, right. we're here at Bertha House. What does that mean? Who's doing the interview here? I'm, yeah, ask, I'm just you, asking what that means, that's all. You and I, who you are. <laughs> but, but, but I interview for who? I'm just Hello, trying to I'm Anthony. So thank you, thank you for doing this. Um, I think we we have two hours. I wanted four. We so have less than two hours. Yeah, we have They say we got to get out here five minutes to 12. Yeah, so this I, is I radio wanted, time. You train in radio? No. <laughs> Let me tell you what happens in radio, right? But then we have two hours, Anthony. We have less than two hours. We have less than two hours, so can we start with the interview? Especially since we go to go the ahead, interview. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And I might not see you again in like forever. No, so, no, um, no. I come through Cape Town every now and then. So I'm going to ask two questions about your background, mm. which are, tell me a little bit about yourself, which is going to be a little bit about yourself. Just a little bit about your background. And then I'm going to ask you the second question is going to be, tell me why you moved from the States to South Africa. So, the first question, um, hi Anthony, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself, who is Anthony? You want to know about me, okay. Listen, uh, I'm a, I'm a, let me put it this way, I was, I'm what's called an, uh, an uh, American African made in the Monhaven section of the Bronx. What that means to you? is that I hold the American passport, got it right here someplace, mm-hmm. and uh, I was, uh, I thought I was born in Marcina section of the Bronx. I grew up in, this, in, the, in the Patterson Project, which is part of the, the Mont Haven section of the Bronx. When I say I was made there, I mean, that's where I had my first fight. Mm-hmm. That's why I, I, I ask people, where, where did you have your first fight? Where did you have your first fight? That's where you were made, it's like, like the mafia, you know, mm-hmm. like that. Um, and then you say, well, what's this African thing comes in? You know, I'm American African. I said, because people think I'm talking about the continent. Well, I am, but not, not the way people talk about the continent. But you know, there's no, when people say, I'm, a, I'm an African-American, I don't know what that means, you know, because we've been to a lot of alliterations. Anyway, uh, it means that I have a, an African mentality. Mm-hmm. And what that means to me is like, uh, I'm, I'm like a, a devotee of uh, Mangliso Robert Sabuque. Mm-hmm. And he says to be African, you have to be human. You have to be humane. Mm-hmm. And so for me, uh, that's what it is. Huh. I'm an American that traveled, that, that, that was made in the South Bronx, New York City. I never lose my accent, mm-hmm. as they say. I never yeah, lose my, my voice. Absolutely. And, and I, I, I do the work of, of, of a humane human being. I happen to be in Africa right now, but wherever I am, I carry that mentality with me. Now, yes. Anything else you want to know? It's Big easy, question. look. I was, I was uh, I'm a lot of things. It's, 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 you know, I would say just look me up on the internet. You'll find out more you want to find out. But, if you want me to just, just ramble on and tell you a story, uh, let's see how I got here. I got here because, or oh, in South Africa, I've been in, uh, I've been in South Africa since 2003. Mm. I came in 2003 as an invite from uh, Bush Radio. I'm a radio man. Mm. Uh, I've been doing radios, specifically when Bush is a community radio station, yeah. and I've been doing community radio uh, since, officially since 1972. When I was pulled in residence for WPRB radio in, uh, in, uh, in Princeton, New Jersey. The program was uh, Saturday Soul with JB. It was a program that played soul music of the era, you know, so like MFSB and, you know, that, that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, Isaac Hayes, that kind of thing. And what happened was, uh, I won't get into it, I'll, I'll get real quick. Uh, what it ended up happening, 
I came there because they say it was a community radio station. I came down with some poetry because I was in the Air Force at the time, but I was doing some extra work at uh, Princeton Hospital. Now it's Princeton Medical Center. Everything changes. And uh, I was listening to the radio, and they said, oh, if you have anything to share with us, come on down. We're a community station. So me stupidly, uh, you know, even though I was like, what, 22 years old or whatever, 21, whatever I was, and uh, I thought, whoa. They invited me down. I've been writing poetry for a while. Let me go down there and do my poem. Well, well, that was a Friday night. Saturday, I came on Saturday, but the, the, the guy, I come to the station, and he's, the guy comes up and says, well, may I help you? And he says, well, they told me I can come down to do some poetry. And he, he looked, he said, wait a second. He said, what, right here. They came back and said, well, well, I won't say what he said about the guys, but he said, well, let, let me see your poetry. So he laughed. So I'm proud. And then one thing led to another, and that was my first uh, thing in radio. Now, I've been theater trained since 1967 at the Negro Ensemble Company in New York, part of the uh, intermediate acting class, thoroughly theater trained. Uh, and the reason why, uh, well, in 19, let me put it this way. If I didn't go into the Air Force, I would have been uh, drafted because they were doing that. We were being constricted back then. I would have been drafted and been in the, in the jungles of Vietnam, beating up on some 13-year-old sure. I had no beef with. So I, I chose to go in the Air Force, do the four years, get out. And when I got out, that's what happened. So. So then went on from there. So anyway, so so uh, I'm, I'm skipping over the the, uh, the theater part only because the radio is more important right now. Uh, because uh, when I went to when I got out the Air Force and uh, I was finished with well, he graduated and I went on to Livingston College, which is part of Rutgers University, and um, uh, and I had my um, I had a program on the air on a, on a, on the what they call the broadcast there uh, called Variations in Blackness, and that's when I first, even at JB's. With JB's program, I create a, a, a group. There was a group of us around. I'm always been with, with groups. So when I got to uh, to uh, WRSU, which is the broadcast station for Rutgers University, I brought in some other people. I trained them in radio. With what I was doing, because I, I knew I knew by then I knew radio, and uh, we did this program for a couple of years. Then when I got out, I wanted to go back to theater. But at the time, yeah, this, this was like the mid '70s. Now I graduated '75, '70, yeah, '74, whatever it was, and. Uh, so what I did was, uh, on the strength of uh, uh, two plays, I, I took an epic poem and returned to the play. Another play I did called Crystal Burns. I submitted it to the uh, to the to the uh, graduate school uh, there at uh, over at. Uh, well, it's not really Douglas Campus, cross on Douglas Campus. And they call it Mason Group School of the Arts right now. But when I first did it, was like some, the School of Performing Arts, whatever it was. And, and on the strength of those two plays, they they, they let me come into the uh, master's program for playwriting. So I did everything except for turning my thesis project. I know, you're gonna say, what? Why did you do that? Well, you know, let me just put it this way. I have to say it this way. Look, what's, my life is like this. You know how to, you know how, are you a Christian? Hmm. Okay, you know how you Christians say, we walk by faith, not by sight. You have that right, I don't know what, what, whatever it is, but y'all be lying. <laughs> y'all don't do that. I walk by faith, not by sight. I just go, and what is supposed to happen, just happens like that because what that's what happens you know I don't plan nothing it just happens the way it happens and I just have a certain amount of skills and I just keep on going you know so that's it so that's that's me to that well okay so I came here mm -hmm. uh, uh, for an invite from Bush Radio Zane Ibrahim seen I was at a workshop in, 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 in Italy in Milan Italy and um, they saw what I did and he wanted me to come but at the time I was I was arts director for WBAI Radio in New York, which is the biggest community radio station in the States at the time. It still is, I guess. And um, uh, it's, it's, when I say, well, it's, it's thoroughly listener sponsored. There's no, there's no corporates or nothing like that involved. Like you, the listeners have to give you, give you the props. So, um, so every once in a while he would call me and say, Anthony, you got to come down and do, you know, do what you do. Because by that, that, by that time I had a reputation for doing audio drama, live audio dramas, you know, uh, with a, with a live audience and by the time I got into the, the 90s I was doing them at uh, it was called the New York Shakespeare Festival Joseph Pat Public Theater and huge audiences blah 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 blah, blah. So it's a whole long thing I've had some very distinguished audio dramas but by that time I said let me put this but I think I I did I did I probably did or I, I kept I kept on ascending you know my first audio drama took place in the station, but I used the entire station. Then I kept on getting bigger and bigger and bigger until finally we had a theater. We do broadcasting it live, uh, all kinds of weird things. Like, let me go to my bag right now. There's, there's something you might want to see. I don't know. If I'm not going to show it to people, but um, I carry this with me all the time. But the, not that I'm, I'm noted for a lot of things, you know. 
Like when I was arts director, I put the first uh, hip hop show on uh, community radio, uh, Jay Smooth Underground Railroad, and uh, that's that that was going for a long time. I don't know what Smooth is doing something now. He's he's a big time, big time. What am I looking for here? He's a big time, big time guy, um, and uh, he. I, I created this group called Creative Unity Collective, which what they did, or what they do, well, what they did, but they were my core group for my audio dramas, which is, uh, which is good. You need, a, you need a resident company. You know, it's like, a, I guess you, if you, we're not doing radio, doing podcasts, but you, back in the day, you know, everybody, I was compared to, uh, because they always do that with audio drama people, compared to, uh, what's the guy that did, um, uh, that did uh, the War of the World, you know, Orson Welles, but, I was, uh, I, 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 I always say that, no, nah, I'm like the Duke Ellington of, uh, of audio drama. Then I said, nah, I'm like the Cab Calloway of, of audio drama. All these names you all don't know. Yeah. But the thing is, uh, when I did this uh, thing in Montreal, Canada, the, the woman there said, you know, you're like, a, she says, you're, you're a combination of Orson Welles and Kurt Vile. You know? So I thought that was a good one, because that's theater and radio, so that's really good. But these people have their own they own their own uh, what we call uh, resident companies. So right now I'm in I'm in uh, I'm based in uh, Dumbaza. I think, I think how, how did that transition happen from you were called to South Africa to do something in Bush Reader. Bush Reader is in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. And then how did that transition happen that you ended up in the Eastern Cape? I walk by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how did it happen? How did you? Well. I, I, um, I was in Cape Town. I did some. I did some. I did a lot of initiatives working with uh, different different townships and different areas. You know, in the Cape Flats. You know, Longa, Danoon, uh, Philippi, all over doing these little or, uh, radio dramas, audio dramas, if you will. I call them audio dramas. And in doing them, um, I kept on developing audio drama. Now, since I had done big ones already, I'm not. I wasn't interested in doing audio dramas myself. I'm interested in training other people how to do audio dramas. So that's so because of that, I uh, end up. Uh, um, well, I end up <laughs> uh, the people at, 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 at this, 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 the, the uh, Center for Media Studies at at, um, at UCT found out about me, and so they asked me to teach a, a little course there. So I took a little course there. So I ended up at UCT. At the same time, uh, Adasa, well, they, they don't know or exist, but the Institute for Democracy in South Africa, something like that. Um, they, uh, uh, they, they asked them, uh, I had trained somebody, they came to my, my place and I trained them how to edit and stuff like that. So she went and got an internship with these people and they asked, well, they, of course, they said, well, where do you come from? And then she told them about me and, and then I came in, they, they asked me what I did. I said, I do audio drama. They said, what is that? And so I did a little tiny workshop and the, the guy said, oh, this is interesting. Can you write a proposal? Now, you have to understand me. I'm going like, I done did everything. I'm, I don't write no proposals no more. Oh, but if you want to go that route, fine. So I wrote him a proposal. I wrote him like a, uh, I think it was like a nine-year proposal, mm. like, like a nine-year span, right? And he looked at it and said, ooh, this is, uh, he didn't say this, I'm going to say like, <laughs> I'm going to say like uh, what Joe Scott Heron would say, ooh, this is deep. Uh, I don't know if we can do that. Look, what we'll do, we can give you an intern, we can give you an office, we can give you a phone, and you know, you have to find your own funds like that. So I'm going like, I don't really, I don't work by money, you know, I'm just, I just, it's not in my, my thing, you know. So I just, so I set it up, and I got, I got a good intern, and then what we did is every week we kept on putting out letters, you know, for solicitation like that, and just kept on, you know. But I'm still doing, training people in audio drama, going around doing audio dramas, and like that. And then after a while, uh, after, after a while, so I kept on doing that, and I still did my audio dramas all around the city, and uh, and at one particular point, the uh, the lottery fund, which is very hard to get, they said, "Oh, okay, we'll we'll give you some money." So so the lottery fund. In the meantime, I had other things that I was doing, and I, I was still working in the work, and I was still teaching at UCT, and also they invited me to uh, to uh, Rhodes University. I did a work work workshop there. That's online. Uh, so it's like. Uh, I just do audio drama. If you if you cut me, I bleed audio drama. Okay, quick question. That's how I cut here. Do you speak a lot about teaching and giving back and not focusing on just doing the work yourself, but then also teaching it to other people? Where does that stem from? Um, 
why it's so important for you to give back and teach and give the knowledge to other people mm. more than just keeping it for yourself. Hmm. Well, I, I often I ask people, what's your through line? When I mean that, I mean, well, look, I started in a family. I have um, uh, six, I said, well, that time, six brothers and sisters, right? And, uh, and I would, if I'm out, then I would come home and I would immediately teach my younger brother and sister something. I just, 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 just uh, tell them how to play chess, I just, whatever it was, right? And uh, I, my family's very, it's called a very diverse in terms of what's happening. I was the only one in the family that people left alone because everybody else had sort of problems, let's put it that way. <laughs> they had problems. I was the only one didn't have problems. I guess also, in a weird sort of sense, I was known in my neighborhood as, as it's like, uh, I was tough, I could fight, this is the South Bronx, but also people thought of me as an intellectual. I didn't know that at the time, but years, years later I, I found this out. Anyway, uh, but I guess that became interesting because I, I could break things down and teach it to people right away, you know? And so I was sort of really respected for that. Uh, but also, I, about 19, well, when I was about nine years old, I joined the Cadet Corps. Uh, the Cadet Corps is the New York City Mission Society Cadet Corps, and that program, Basically, they train you. It's like it's like they train you. They train you to serve. Let me put it that way. The way the way it is, you you're part of a unit, and then as you as you as, as you ascend in the, in, the, in the ranks, then you have to you're responsible to, to teach people behind you, right? So even my the fraternity that they that we have the Pentecostal Military Fraternity, which still exists today, which I'm still active in, uh, that's what that's what we do. We we were trained to serve. We're not trained to, to well, we just trained to serve. So I've been trained at a very young age to serve. And, uh, and I have this weird thing that uh, even when I got out the Air Force, as the Air Force I was a lab technician, so I made money, right? When I got out and went to uh, Livingston College when I graduated, uh, I, again, I could make money, but I also knew theater. So I came back to New York uh, when I didn't take my degree. I came back to New York in like 1980, but by the time I came back, all those people I was working with, all those you know, big time actors, whatever, they were all going to Hollywood because they were doing black exploitation films and stuff like that. So I ended up uh, helping, or I should say, I'm more of a behind the scenes person. Yes, I have been thoroughly trained in theater, but I like, uh, I like lights, you know. Uh, my first real job was running lights for Daddy Goodness, which is this play that, that uh, Negro Ensemble Company did their, their first season. It's a Richard Wright play. Uh, anyway, um, and, and I just fell in love with that, and then because of that, they trained me how to be a stage manager. So that's why, that's my through line. My through line is, is Sta stage manager is the only person that doesn't have a, uh, 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 what do we say, uh, you know, when a script comes in, uh, everybody, like the actor wants to, you know, have the best, you know, how many lines do I have? The, the author wants you to do the, wants you to do the lines, as they said, the, the director wants to put their stamp on it, the, the, the designers want it, whatever they want to do, the, 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 you know, everybody, the producer wants to make money. The stage manager is the only one that they say, hmm, how can we make this thing work with the stuff that we have? So my mentality is sort of different than, than a whole lot of other, other, other things. So anyway, uh, yeah, so because of that, uh, stage manager, uh, and, and because I was a lab technician, I made money lab technician, but then I stopped that because I wasn't, yeah, medicine, uh, in fact, when I got out of, out of the Air Force, when I got finished, they, people asked me, don't you want to go to medical school? I said, no, I want to go back to theater. <laughs> It would be easy, but I, I, I'm not interested. I'm not into the, the medicine was terrible. Me, med, the medical establishment is terrible, let's put it that way. And even when I graduated, um, on my undergraduate degree is actually in communications, but though it's video and, and, and TV production. Uh, but I trained myself in radio. Well, I have my own radio program. I just, I just, I'm a radio person. But, but people want, thought when I was gonna graduate, I was gonna go to one of those, because I was like the top of my class there. You know, I was going to go to like NBC, ABC, CBS, something like that. I said, no, nah, I'm going back to the theater. Well, and I wouldn't go to them anyway because they said, why? Because at some particular point, you know, I would, you know, I'd have to address their mediocrity. Mm -hmm. They'd have to get rid of me or I'd have to get rid of them. Yeah. I'm not going through that. So I just went. And, and as it turned out, even though when, after that I went, I did go to graduate school for theater. But when I finished with that and I came back to New York, uh, I didn't like the theater scene. So I ended up... Uh, uh, I ended up, just to make it real short, even though I've been very long so far, uh, ended up at WBAI, which is that station I was talking about. In about 1982, I started at BAI, helping this guy, uh, Bernard White, great Bernard White, 
uh, she did a program on emanation. So it was me and him, and I would put you know records back in the jacket for him, and I would uh, go out and do vox pop for him. You know, go go interview people in the street about the subject, come back and edit the tape, but make it make it like a story. So it was just me and him, and we got we got really good. You know, it's like what I learned from Bernard is this, because we would do stuff and we would hit it before everybody hits it. You know, we would you know we we would break something right, break the story. But as soon as the people picked it up, we say, oh, that's nice. Leave it, leave it to leave, leave it to the mass. Leave, leave it to the leave, leave it to the, the the mainstream. Let's put it that way. And then we go off and find some, something else to do. You know, another another story. In fact, we, when Move had his thing in Philadelphia, you know, you know, Mamia Abul Jamal's and the cats in jail or Death Row. Well, um, you know, it's a state. Anyway, and you know, we interviewed him when he was a reporter on the streets. <laughs> so, I mean, that that's that's how far back I go in terms of uh, that. But I also did a lot of um, how you say that. Um, I did a lot of, I'm an archivist actually, and a, and a recordist. So I did a lot of forums, recorded a lot of uh, uh, distinguished people uh, and like that. Like for instance, to give you an idea, you know, uh, since we're in Africa, uh, this guy John Stockwell, uh, I'm recording him as he's telling us, this is way back in the 80s, about how he had Patrice Lumumba's uh, body in the back of his boot of his Mercedes, you know, when they killed him, because he's CIA, he's CIA, ex-CIA. This story's well known. Um, but also in that time period, in all in that time period, uh, when Thomas Sankata came to New York, I recorded him. So I met Thomas Sankata. Mm. Hey, shake my hand. You know what that means? You know how you, you now that have a connection it. to Th Thomas Sankata. You you're not obligated to to for revolution. I'm just saying. You know. <laughs> okay, quick question. Like I said to you, like the the main aim of this chat that we're having mm -hmm. is that I want to focus more on food. Oh, food, yeah. oh yeah. Also because we, everybody eats, so our food has a massive impact in all of our lives. So um, I wanted to explore your views on food as a person who was born in the U.S., traveled the world, ended up in South Africa, and you also as an elderly man. I said elderly last last night when I said uh, I, no way. Message and I was like, fine. I don't yeah, I'm an elder. I'm yeah, an elder, it's fine. As, as an elderly man and I'd rather be an ancient but <laughs> as I'll, an I'll ancient take elder. man. As an ancient man. So um I also saw your 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 Instagram video and the way that you eat as a, as a person mm. and what influences that and that was recent. That was the India. Yeah, the India you said that you yeah. that was the last video that you did when you were in India. Mm. So um, I wanted to tap into that as mm. as a person who, like I said, was born in the U.S., traveled the world, and ended up in South Africa. How it has changed the way you eat, and um, whether you also a little bit particular about what you put into your body and what you consume. Okay. You consume well. As See, I, I grew up. I grew up on, on in, in the South Bronx, like I said. In, 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 in like I guess they called the project. Well, you know, the projects, the ghetto, as they say. You know, and uh, we was on what's called welfare. You know, the state. So my earliest food was actually, you know, welfare cheese. You know, that kind of thing. But my grandmother was an incredible cook. So we would there. There'd be markets and stuff like that. Back then, it's a different time. So the the food wasn't as expensive. It wasn't poisoned and stuff like that. So you can go to the market and get fresh fish, whatever. Plus, she was just an incredible cook. She'd make a gourmet meal mm. out of welfare food. So I grew up eating healthy. Let me put it that way. It wasn't this the whole thing. It wasn't this whatever you're calling it, it's organic, whatever. We, I just ate healthy, and I learned how to eat healthy. That's the mo most important part. Um, then when I got, in fact, interestingly enough, when I was in the Air Force, my first job was the salad man. So I would you know, make the salads on the line for the people. So it was kind of interesting. My, my brain sort of thinks differently. But in the 80s, I got very interested in alternative kind of things, uh, foods and stuff like that. But I, like I said, I always ate healthy, but I got interested in, uh, I won't say organic food, but just, eat, just eating at a certain time. Then I learned about rhythms, and I learned about oh, in the 80s. But I ignored that. I just, I just keep on going in the 90s. Then when I got here, um, I guess, in the last 10 years, maybe? Yes, in the last 10 years, I became more conscious uh, because of people, of them poisoning the food, mm. you know, of, of the, the pesticides. Because remember, I'm, I'm at WBI Radio, so I'm learning, I know what Monsanto's is doing, I know what all this, I know, I know what, what, what they're doing. I, in fact, when I was a lab technician, I knew when things started to change, basically, 
in 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 the seventies when 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 uh, doctors no longer they they they're more employ uh, employ what do you call it, administrators than doctors. So everything is about making money now, and so. That it's not that the, 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 the corporates want to kill you, they just want to make more money. And if you should die in the meanwhile, well, that's, you know, you, you better do your research, right? So, so I, I guess what I'm, what I'm saying is that it's, it was up, I realized at some particular point it was up to me, spurred up by my grandmother, uh, you know, you want to eat healthy, then eat healthy. You, 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 you wash your, you know, just you got to do what you need to do because they're doing what they need to do. That's, I think I don't think people understand that. Oh, they're killing us! They're, 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 they're shooting up! They're shooting up the cows with steroids. Okay, well I understand. Then I ain't gonna buy my meat from the state. Oh, I shouldn't say that. I'm living in the Eastern Cape. See that cow over there? I know what that cow is eating, right? Believe me, you're in the Eastern Cape. Every week, every weekend, there's a wedding, a funeral, a Thanksgiving. Something's happening, and that cow that was eating the other week, right? That cow, that same cow, wasn't eating the pesticide. Okay, maybe maybe shooting them with some some sort of things, but you know you know what you're eating. Versus if you go to the supermarket, you know where that came from. I hear they got stuff come from Brazil and from oh, eat, uh, you know what these chickens are eating. That uh, eat, uh, oh, uh, why eat chickens anyway? You know, grow it. You know? And then uh, where I am right now, one of the initiatives that, that one of the initiative that we do at the Hotel House um, is we grow our own food. You know, uh, I think I Where's said that? you. This is in the Eastern Cape in Dabaza. The hotel house is in Dabaza. Come anytime you want. Uh, uh, what do you say? Block 16, you know, 1625. Hey, you know something? Just Google. Google my La Jote House. L I K R O T I. La Jote House. And, and it's, it'll come up on Google Maps. Okay, just go to the Eastern Cape, you know, up, up, from, King, up from King Williamstown. You'll see right there. We're, we're, we're listed because I have people around me that know stuff. So I'm going to know there. My, my cat. He made sure we did, the Hotel House got on Google Maps, mm. so you can you can find us. Tell me about the Hotel. Oh, the Hotel. Well, it's, it's a it's a it's a it's an original RDP house. You know, I'm talking about like the apartheid era. That what they built that was so it's cement. It's like whatever it is, and it's two rooms. And I when I I I I use it. I use it. I, my vision for it was to make a community center, a small community center for the community. And we have a lot of land right there, and to also to to um, to show we, we show films on the on the walls on the outside. You know, we grow we grow all kinds of crops all around on around. We have another, and it keeps on getting getting bigger. And if we have an, uh, over in the nearby village, uh, uh, Zavalaza, they just built we built a theater for ourselves. You know, but then they have some land around there that we're growing stuff. So the Jorge House is a community sort of like a community house. It's not funded. We don't want no. No, you can't give us money. <laughs> well, you can't give us money, but we don't. We we don't look. We don't. We, we don't put in for any funds. We don't ask no no government support. We don't ask nothing like that. In fact, if you want to know about the hotel house, you got to come and see what we do and talk to us. And like like for instance, right now on Sunday, I got to get back on Sunday because uh, the, the 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 group we there's a um, they they got together. A, uh, I think they call it a talent show, whatever it is. W what they're doing is they're doing this whole day of presentations, of theater presentations and audio drama presentations. I have to make it back for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, if, so, so you got to come and, and see that. You know, if, if you want, it's, it's happening in Dimbaza, you know. And if, 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 say, for instance, you want to give, say, you say, oh, that, 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 that man, you know, the brother was, brother was seeing some seer. Let me give him some money. No, you can't just give me some money. In fact, you can't give me any money. You got you to gotta see what we're doing in Dumbaza and get there. I don't know how, how you're going to get there. Just get there and see what we're doing. And then you can say, ooh, that's, that's worthy. Let me, let me see what's going on. Because, again, we, we're not beholden. Anyway, let me put this way. Brock 16, but slowly cleaned it up. It was, a, it was known as a known, uh, uh, well, let's say criminal block. He cleaned it up. Uh, and, uh, and then we keep on cleaning it up. There's no crime on Block 16. Mm. You can't. Get, I was not talking about petty crime. Right? People are trying to steal wallets or no wallets, no cell phones. They're trying to break into people's houses. That happens. The community takes care of it. Mm. Then what the police for? Oh, the police better go. And in fact, when the police come around, they they, they, they just leave, they just walk away. So no, we got we, we can handle this, and we deal with we, we deal with what we need to deal with. The police. Here, here's my thing. The 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 South African. Uh, police services, you know, just you know, staff or whatever. You're not supposed to be you know, arresting people for this or that or, or domestic. No, the community should deal with that. You're supposed to make sure that these syndicates don't come in and do what they do. 
Well, what's the government supposed to do? The government's supposed to make sure that something like the, the, U, what's the UAE is coming now and, and, and trying to take over buy land. The government's supposed to make sure that your land is not being bought up by some foreign entity. Everybody has their job. So we're doing our job in, the, in, in, in Block 16 in Dombasa. We're doing our, uh, doing our job. Now everybody else in the, in the scheme of things need to do their job. So when you ask me what, what, what happened in the hotel, basically we're teaching, that we're, we're teaching, we're demonstrating, we're living a, a, a healthy lifestyle, growing food out of, oh, Dombasa has some really good soil, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, um, food, uh, uh, we're, we're addressing the, 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 the the, uh, the community's needs, like for instance, I teach, uh, I'm with the Dabaza Society for the Age. Uh, I, every, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I teach them Tai Chi. So we do some exercise in the morning with them. It's hilarious. I love these guys. Yeah. <laughs> but they're my age, you know, we, uh, you know, we sort of hang out. Um, and, um, and, and, and the children all, also, it just, of course there's drugs, but the thing is, why are they drugs? Because yeah, that's an interesting question. I'll answer my own question. But, let me put it this way. Who's the first drug pusher that you know? Just tell me. Who do you think the first drug pusher is? I have no idea. Oh, well, that's what they people say. They drug the party guys and sell, sell drugs in the community, right? Hmm. I'll tell you the first drug pusher. Your lazy mother. Your lazy au pair. Your, 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 your lazy tata. Because what you want to do, you want to shut that kid up. And what do you do? You give him a sweetie. Hey, take a sweetie. Take a sweetie. Then you get him hooked on sugar. You do, do, you, I know you better know that, that sugar is more addictive than cocaine. So your first drug, your first drug pusher is your parents, your, your aunties, your, your grandparents, your whoever they want to, they, 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 they're so busy talking to, yapping with each other, they don't want to pay any attention to the child. Child starts whining, you know what I mean? Instead of engaging with the child, right, I'm, talking, I'm not talking about baby babies, I'm talking about like when they're two or three years old. So you give them a sweetie. Now everybody's now, now doping up their kids. Now, later on, oh, let, let, oh let, this is another boogaboo. You got these TV commercials showing the Joburg lifestyle, you know, the city lifestyle, right? And they have a, a commercial, I'm not going to name any products, because then you'll get, you'll get bad, but some alcoholic product. And the people have a good time with the alcohol. Did you do? Did you do? Did you get that? And then they say at the end of the course, oh, but you but drink responsibly, and this is not to be sold to anybody under 18. Yeah. You're three years old to, to what's 18? What's that, 15 years? Whatever it is, you know, you're, you're looking at that. What's going to happen when you're 18? The first thing you're going to want to do is go drink. And then to make it worse, <laughs> to make it worse, if you happen to go to University, everybody shouldn't go to you. But if you happen to go to university, the first week, they all the liquor people got their things tied up, you know. Now, this is the first time. Remember, you're 18 now. In fact, look at this. Well, I'll, I'll get to it. I don't know if we get to that. But the first time you're out of the house under no supervision, you turn 18, you, you're dumb behind things you've grown, right? You have, you're, 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 you're alcoholed up, you know. <laughs> You, you have other people your age, and everybody's in their little grouping, because you know, after, from the age of like 13 to 22, you don't listen to nobody mm. that's not in your age group. Mm. You, know, you only listen to your teacher because you're supposed to try to get out of there so you can get a job, I guess, I don't know. You, you, certain, you go, you know, church, parents, forget that, you know what I mean? So you, your code is all jacked up. You make your own codes in, in your group. You know, I say, hey, try this, try that, try this, try that. And so you're doing that, and of course, you know, things happen, right? If you happen to make it past that, then you're fine. Anyway, so, so that's your first. So if I, hear, if I get into a, some sort of panel, somebody says, oh, we got a drug problem, I'm going to choke them. I'm going to say, no, you don't have a problem. You have a you problem. Parents don't want to be parents, and adults don't want to be adults, and children don't want to be children. It's as simple as that. That's simple to me. So what, what, we, what, what we institute in, 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 in the hotels or in, in, in the Baza, it's very simple. No, you, it's not a. You, no, you, people say, "Oh, oh, father, I'm, 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 I'm hungry. I need money." No, you don't need money. I, I need a job. No, you don't need a job. Well, no, that's what everybody. That's what everybody says. Don't you, you need a job? You need a job? No, you don't need a job. You need an opportunity. You need opportunity. An opportunity will give you whatever you need. Ask. Don't ask anybody. 
I'm telling you, opportunity to give you what you need. You want me to, uh, let me, let me, let me, let me, before we go any further, let me solve all your problems. I'm going to solve your education problem. I'm going to solve your job problem. Here's how I'm going to do it. First of all, I don't, and I don't want no position. You can't pay me for this. In fact, the reason why I don't get a salary is because you can't pay me what I'm worth. Why? Because I'm one of those people that you can't pay with. I'm, I'm more valuable than, 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 than you, could, you could imagine. Here's the thing. Here's what I would do. First of all, this whole South Africa, whatever, or this across the board. No, forget that. Southern Africa, you get SADC, right? I take the SADC people, right? Who, I don't care who's in charge of SADC. I'm talking to every, everybody at one time. I don't, I don't, don't, don't tell me who's the head of it. I don't want to know all that. Just give me all the SADC people. I don't, even, I don't need the heads. I just need the, the middle people, you know, the, the functionaries. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to institute Li-Fi through entire Southern African regions. So Li-Fi, what's that? That's my point. What, why come you don't know what Li-Fi is? You know what Wi-Fi is, don't you? Mm -hmm. That's radio wave, no? Mm -hmm. Li-Fi is light waves. You can transmit over light waves. So now all the countries are going to get together. They're going to spawn. They're going to pay for Li-Fi for the entire region, which means all you have to do now is just get a cell phone or a mobile phone or whatever, they are, whatever device you're calling this thing. You get a device. Your, your data is free. Your airtime is free. And then what happens if you are, say for instance, say for instance, you, 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 you're a goat herder. You don't need, well, you could go to, you don't need to go to university. You're a goat herder in Lesotho. You need, you got a problem? You can call it, you can go to goat herder in Peru and say, hey, I got this problem. The guy in Peru says, oh, well, here's how we did it. Or you call it, you see what I'm saying? You can call somebody any place in the world because, you know, you got free Li-Fi. And you, and you don't need to go, you know, you, University just means the universe. So the entire universe is now at your hands. You can learn from the entire universe. You want to take a course from, oh, I know, you, you all just love those, the Sabon, or, or what's, what's that, what's that, what's that one in England? Uh, the, one of those, uh, the Oxfordies, you know what I mean? Or the, or the what, what's the, one of those American universities, or, the, or, 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 or McGill, you know, in, in Canada. You, oh, these are, big, oh, we're gonna, oh, oh, this is gonna make you so smart. You know, it's gonna make you so smart. Oh, please. Now you can just take a course from them or, or on your device. You don't even have to go there. And those people who need to, who need to go to university for the first two years so they can, get, they can party and get drunk and whatever have you and, and they can get out all their demons, well, they can do that too. But other people who got other things to do and they, wanna, they, they can find an opportunity for themselves, you know, they can learn how to draw or whatever have you through the, through the live fire, well, then that's what will happen. That's called an opportunity. You don't want to give people jobs. You don't want to give people money. You want to give them an opportunity to continue to do what they're supposed to do, which is to grow as a human being and to be humane. Which brings me to our last point, yeah. which is, if you're not humane, you need to get off of the continent of Africa. Like I said, Magalisa Robert Sabuque said, on this continent, to be African, as far as mentality I'm talking about right now, be African, you have to be humane. If you're not humane, take your booty. I want to say booty. I'm talking about the, the, the riches that these people, these politicians, or whoever, these UAEs and, the, and the, whatever, who's coming out here and trying to, trying to take it and go someplace else with it. Here on this continent, you see all, the, you see all this, these oceans around it. If you're going to set, go, go past that ocean barrier, that water barrier, and come onto the continent, you gotta be humane. If you ain't humane, get off the continent, go somewhere. There's a lot of places in the world you can be inhumane, or you can keep on doing your fighting, your, your bombing, your whatever you're doing, your, your pillaging and your raping or whatever you're doing, do it someplace else. Africa is about humanity. If you're not humane, get off the continent. That's all I'm saying. Let's get back to Le Hote. Oh, Le Hote, yes. Where do you start it? When was it officially opened? Oh, that's interesting. Because it, it has a it has a uh, a genesis, I suppose. It actually the hotel house actually started in uh, Limbete in, in Alice, uh, in Salamanzi, uh, because I had a little I had a uh, we were renting a place, and I, and we had enough space, so I sort of I sort of I made an extension to the house, and it's extension we call it the sus hut. The Sussex just meant that we we would meet we would meet there was the, the some some of the cops some some of the university kids around um, Scully would come up he's been with me for a while and um, and we would just we would talk talk politics or whatever just talk right 
and uh, so it was called a sasa. What the community didn't understand. Well, anyway, they put that. We bless her soul. My wife, she's sort of like she she she's a handful. Let's put it that way. Anyway, so we had, we I had to leave. I had to leave. We we left Lambete and came down. This is in Lambete again. Is in Alice, which is in, or Eddie Kenny, or whatever or whatever we call them these days. Eddie Kenny is a is a name for Alice before. Alice was Alice, and then there's another name before that. You know, you know how yeah you know, the autochthonous people have their things, and then, then the colonizer comes and he changes everything. And so anyway, and it's, it's up from uh, it's up from it's up from it's up from King or Dabaza, and it's and it's down from uh, whatever that place is up, not um, uh, whatever that is up there. The, the, the next thing up, uh, the next Afrikaans to, uh, town up. And so when we came down to Dabaza. Me and my wife moved uh, moved into uh, uh, um, uh, a, a village, a small village nearby, near outside of King, right? And uh, Kugubevu, right? Nobody knows where Kugubevu is. Don't worry about it, right? But but uh, but I had been working. I had been, my research. Oh, I should. Oh, I forgot this part. I was going. To, I was. I was at the University of Fort Hare doing some graduate studies on 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 uh, to try to get. Uh, basically, audio drama back into the academia, uh, but that didn't uh, that didn't pan out for me either. But because of that, I had to have a, a research group. So I got this group for uh, Isitebe Sunjoli uh, out of Dimbaza, but they well anyway. So one thing led to another, and they sort of dissipated too. But out of that group, only only Mr. Kloli and a few other people that kept, I kept in touch with. And so when I moved, when I came to Dimbaza, then I had again uh, I was I had this idea. Take this house that was slowly controlled, and make it, uh, and basically make it a community house. And was, like I said, was only on the street had already cleaned up the street, so all we had to do is just start that. So that's the genesis. What was that? Okay. Oh God, know. I came in t 2013. No, no, I can. I'm sorry. I came, I came up from Cape Town in 2013. So all this started. This all this started in about 2016, and uh, I guess officially. Uh, I think it was this year, or the, 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 the end of last year, we started work on, on, on the Chote House, started transforming it. And one of my videos we showed, there's a, there's a dedication, whatever. We're still building it, you know, we're still, it's, it's an ongoing project. And at the same time, you know, the Chote House is just, it's just the, 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 the nucleus, you know what I mean? There's other stuff that they were doing around. Um, we're very well into the, into the community. But it's like, you have to understand, <coughs> it's not me. I'm just a, I'm not even a catalyst. I'm just a, an interested observer. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm a pimple on the pole of progress. You know, I'm a bump on the log. Where I, I'm, okay, I'm being low. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, let me put it this way. You know, you know, when you get to your eldership, you know, then you're supposed to, you're not supposed to be doing stuff. You're not supposed to be yapping and, 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 and beating on people and, and talking bad about people, so you can't do it right, and in my day, and whatever have you. All you're supposed to do is see what people are doing, and then sometimes they come and ask you, well, well, well Tata, you know, this is, oh, should you, you say, ah, yeah, I see what you're doing. It looks all right, but perhaps you should think about this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You just, you sort of nudge them. You know, I don't know, you know, you know I, I know some people that used to do something like that, but you know the thing fell out part because blah blah blah. You never make yourself the thing. You never try to be the authority. Yeah. You you're just the. You're, you're, a lot of people look. I have a lot of, I have a lot of, training from a lot of different people. So if I'm talking to you, you think I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to you. You might be talking to one of my fraternity brothers. You might be talking to one of my, my one of my teachers. I mean, you know, I've been taught. You might be talking to John Henry Clark. You know, I spent so much so much time at, and uh, you know, you might be talking to J James Small. You might be talking. You know, all this wisdom I have because I don't stay in one place too long. Um, because I I just been a lot of different places. I'm not, you know, and I read a lot. Oh, sorry, I, sh I should say this. And I read. <laughs> I read a lot of books, and now I pay attention to it. Well, even on the internet. I, I, I dally it sometimes, but there's there some, some important things that I that I get. I love listening to some some podcasts. Hey, this is a podcast! Yay! Uh, things you know, things that that spark my interest. Or like like I said, uh, I walk by faith. Faith will just you know will just throw things in my way. But just uh, hey, check this out, and I'll check it out. 
If it's not for me, I keep on going. And the thing is, look, Mr. Neely Fuller Jr., I'm a devotee of Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. too. He's his, he's his elder, this ancient like me. And uh, but he's more ancient than I am. He's like, but I'm 70, well, how old am I? I'm 74, he's like 94, right? So if it wasn't for a mistake in geography, I could be his, I could be his son or something like that. Anyway, but he says, all we have is uh, time and energy. All we give it is time and energy. How you spend your time and how you spend your energy is what's happening. So if the media has you looking at, at, at whatever they got you looking at, that means that they're taken away from whatever. If the politicians throw something up and then everybody's talking about that thing, that means it's taking you away from whatever. One of the most profound experiences I had was at UCT. I was, I was up there on the steps, something like that, and this, this, this girl was running, running up. Say she's a girl, because she's a girl. Well, maybe she's young, young, this young lady, sorry. I didn't, let me not offend anybody, you know. This young lady was going up the steps, and I, something was happening. I said, oh, are you going to blah, blah? She said, oh, I can't. I'm a master's student. Now, you understand what that means. She says, whatever they're doing, they're doing. But I have a certain amount of time that I got to do what I do to the maximum. That's, what it, that's how it interprets to me. So, therefore, I can't spend my time doing this if I need to accomplish that. And then when I finish accomplishing that, then maybe I have time to do this. That's all it means. So if you, if you want to, I'm not telling people they shouldn't get out there and play dice in the corner for five minutes, but why do you want to play dice for five hours? I'm not saying you shouldn't, you shouldn't, let me get provocative now. I'm not saying you shouldn't try to rap to that chick, you know, and try to, you know, try to persuade her that, that you love her, whatever have you. And you spend 10 hours doing that when you could have, you know, y'all could have been forging the next revolution. Instead of you trying to get in her drawers, you could have, you, y'all could have been, you know, I'm sorry, that's why I forgot you're a Christian. No, it's, I, it's I, right. I, I, I take I'm, it back. I'm also a, I take a it Christian. all back. I'm Don't listen to me. <laughs> I'm just a brother and old fool. I still want to go back. I still yes. want to go back to the front yeah. of the house. What the about crops it? that you grow? What do you guys do with it? And what do you grow specifically? Well, right now, we're, 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 we're like I said, we just started just different kinds of things. Um, slowly looking for seeds or whatever have you. But we got oh man, we're, you got to talk to them slowly. That's you got you. She, she's in charge of it. I just say, oh, yeah. You know, we got rose, we, we, we got, uh, you know, regular stuff, tomato, spinach, beetroot, uh, cucumber. All, uh, I'll, send you a, I'll send you a link. Yeah. <laughs> no, but we're, we're banana tree, uh, what pear tree. What do you do with this? Like, do you give it out to the community for free? Do you cook it for the community? What do you do with what you grow? Well, right now, I've been going for five months because I was in India, so I don't know what they're doing with it. Yeah, no, no, we've... We, like I say, we have these movie nights, so they'll 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 feed people. You know what I mean? Uh, but Scully makes this bread, so she'll he'll give it out to people in the neighborhood like that. Um, but our our interest is to make is to, is to have people. Uh, right now, actually, we're still at the beginning because right now we we're, we're gathering seeds. We're making ma making. We're having people in their own yard grow certain things. We want to. He wants to eventually get. I say he because I'm taking myself out of it. He well, okay. We want to eventually get it. So that if you go, if if you have pumpkin over here, and you and you have kale over here, and you have more corn over here, that we just do what's called. Uh, and I know everybody's into Marxism and and, and whatever, uh, uh, capitalism, whatever. Well, it's communalism. So the community says, okay, uh, you need tomatoes. I got I got some pears. You know, you take the pears. I take the tomatoes. We're, we're cool. You know. Uh, I think one of the problems that you have is that you you people have. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let me use this word, ensconced. They've ensconced themselves in the uh, colonial way of, of doing. So what's happened is that before when you used to have schools and each school had their own little garden where they would grow the food and like that and then with the excess they would take to market. Well, when your liberation came along, when you had this little armistice with the, with, 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 with the forces that be, with the evil forces, you know, when you, when you gave the, your economics to, to Britain, or rather to, to London, and you, and you, and you gave, your, and you gave your, uh, your land to the, to the Afrikaans, you know, and you took the politics and the singing and the dancing, right? Well, guess what? You get what you get. And out of that thing, and then the, 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 then the pop, let's say pop, then, then the people who took the singing and the dancing and the politics, they said, oh, we're going to have tenders right now. Let me say something. Megalusa Robertson Bugre's widow said, the worst thing that happened in South Africa is the tender system. 
You got people who just because they know somebody who knows somebody else, they have no skills, they do da da, da hu da da hu da ha, and before you know it, it's a catastrophe. I was living up there, you, you know, and, and, and then, it, then it gets to be, oh, and then it gets really worse. When I was, like, again, when I was in Lefete, they were doing the, 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 the street, right? The, 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 the street, you know, the, the roads, right? And then you just tend to, to uh, uh, the head of the taxi thing. He, I guess he had some, some uh, whatever, whatever he had, right? He had no skills in building no roads. The road's still being built. Maybe it is, and I haven't been having some long time. But in the middle of that, they hired some other guy. Here we go. I'm not saying, I'm just saying, this is the fact. And this guy fills the road, boom, 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 boom. And one part of the road is going past, um, going past the Victoria Hospital. One part of the road, done in no time at all. What's the thing? Because the guy that, the other guy they hired, right, knew, I'm not gonna say his race, but knew what was going on. Meanwhile, you know, the tender guy, just because it's money, 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 you know, that's all they're looking at. They're looking at accomplishments. Where's your pride in what you do? I'm an audio dramatist. I do the best. Or look, I, before I left in 2003, I, I said this on the air. I said, I'm the baddest audio dramatist on the planet. Ain't nobody can beat me. It doesn't mean nobody can beat me. I'm just saying, I'm putting the challenge out there. Show me a better. Show me. A, look, look uh, 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 I wanted to show you this before. Show me an audio dramatist that did an audio drama. With, with, a, with a strip this thick, I'm, I'm putting on my fingers for you podcast people, that's like, uh, you know, just showing like maybe two inches, right? This, this thing, look at this cast. Look at how many people in this cast. And I did everything in here. I adapted it, I directed it, I produced it. I'm also the engineer. This is a huge cast. This was an eight and a half hour live rate audio drama. No commercial break. Beat that. Hey, this is the last one. This is the last one I did before I left. The last big one I did called The Glorious Monster in the Bell of the Horn. This was this I did. This is from a Larry Neal uh, play. Uh, and this was done like Peter and the Wolf had some, some of the best jazz musicians, some of the best actors, all doing this thing. And they said, well, why would they do it for you? Because they have fun. We have fun when we do audio drama. Oh, we have so much fun. We have so much fun. Oh, my goodness. People want to people hang with me because we have fun. I'm about to do, I'm about to do, oh, I can't, should I reveal it now? How much time you got left? I've been talking all this time. You ain't had, you ain't said it. Huh? Okay, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you something that's going to happen right now. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, like I said, uh, now I have diff different configurations of uh, audio dramas, right? Or different ways of doing audio dramas, a lot of different ways. So we're creating this group, in, uh, or these groups in, 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 in Dimbaza. Yeah, in Moscow, there's, 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 there's projects that we do and training that we do, and then we have the audio drama unit. Now, I look at, I see everything, but I only, I only advise, like, not advise, but I, I give comment to, what the, to, the, to the things that they're doing. But the audio drama unit, we just started. And so, <laughs> we're gonna do this thing. Uh, I just, uh, well, they're gonna, uh, uh, I have somebody in charge of the audio drama unit that, that was with me um, she was part of the Danoon people who I did an audio drama with them. But then when I was working, when I was at working, when I was at UCT, I insisted that when I did work in the, in, in the, in the township, that I would take two people from the township and they could audit my class. And the deal was supposed to be that if, uh, if they should order the class and you know, do everything, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have a grade or anything. But if they were worthy, they could, you know, somehow Get into UCT. Well, UCT, well, it didn't work out that way. But anyway, so this particular young lady, Sino, she was a, from from um, Danu. Then she went and ordered the class, and she was involved in a lot of audio drama. So, oh, we were we were uh, me and Scully, we were doing something in East London, and she was working in one of those, you know, one of one of those one of those places, you know, one of those chain stores. And she's ah, you know, so hey, blah 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 blah. This like last year. I said, I said, you know, we're working on something like that there. We'll, we'll give you a call or something like that. Now, she's one of the people that actually knows what I'm doing. So, we, she's now up in, they brought, he, brought up, he brought up to uh, Dimbaza, and he's working with the kids to do just audio drama, right? But now, real, well, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, no, 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 to do my, uh, I'm going to do a, uh, a, a, uh, one of my Instagrams on this today, later on, I'm gonna go to Chimaranga. Chimaranga, oh, also I should say, 
I have a relationship with Chimarenga. You know Chimarenga? Mm. Okay. Because when they was doing past Pan African Space Station, yeah. you ever hear that? Yeah. Well, I was, you know, you had Mayo, you had Antonio, right? Then you had Martin, who was the engineer. Yeah. You had Stacy, who was the, 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 she did the website with her. Then you had the production engineer. Yeah. I'm the production engineer okay. for Pass. Or, or was it, what it was going, just the, 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 in the heyday. The, the, when we did the, this every Steve Pico month, you know, we would have this is an incredible music initiative, one of the best I've ever encountered in my life, right? Um, so, anyway, well, so, so, uh, so in, in, in doing past, I, I, uh, I you got such a lot of people that are happy, da, 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 and, 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 uh, where's that going with this? Um, I was trying to go to here. Oh, so anyway, so she, so, so, so now, um, uh, so now, Sino is now up in the Vaza teaching the audio drama uh, shot, right? And I'm just doing audio drama. So basically, I'm like, well, I'm like the audio. I'm, I'm, thing, I'm, not, I'm not her boss, but she's, she's doing it. I'm just advising like that, like let's go just advise like that. But we're going to do an audio drama. I'm going to reveal it to you right now because I have to train people how to write. Now, when I was in, I was in, in uh, when I was in India this past time, I. I, uh, I was trying to, Sino and, and Piwe, I was trying to get them to write along with me because I wrote every day, you know, because writing, because remember I went to graduate school for playwriting, so I can write easy, it's just, just the easiest thing for me to do, right, and I was trying to train them how to write, and so these knuckleheads, they, 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 were, they weren't following what I was doing, right, but, but I didn't, sorry, I didn't, give, I didn't give up on them, so I have, so, 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 so now she's there, so she's got to write every day. Like, if you're going to be a writer, you got to write every day. If you're going to be a, whatever, dance every day. If you're going to be a, a, a podcaster, you got to podcast often, right? But you got to know how to talk into the microphone. You, I say if you're going to be a, a presenter for the news, you should get up every morning and take some script in, in the mirror, just, just just practice doing that. Whatever. If you're just like if you're a musician, you're going to run scales every, every morning. That's, that's what you do. You know, if you're a runner, you run every day, that kind of thing. So I, so I got this idea. Uh, so because we just started the audio drama unit, so I got this idea. Um, uh, I I told her I wrote her. This is the thing. I, I said uh, I have a, a writing assignment for you. You are to write some wedding vows. So we're going to have a uh, a uh, uh, what do you call that a a, 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 a a wedding ceremony, right? And and so in this wedding ceremony. Uh, I, I suggested that in the ceremony you're gonna, she's going to be the, 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 the first woman audio drama like you have your, your bride and your groom like she's the bride uh, and I'm going to be the groom right? don't worry about all that stuff right? this ceremony will make you the first uh, I don't like the word lady I think the first woman of audio drama that means I will be the oracle of audio drama see now let me tell you where that comes from because when we, when we did this, I used to do these 24-hour conclaves. And so this one the woman who took a lot of photography, girl, took a lot of photography for us, um, her name is Lori Ann. She's, in fact, if you see one of my web pages, there's a thing called, um, it says, uh, Culture Revolutionary. It's a picture with me you know, with, a, with, a, with a talking drum, right? She took that picture. Anyway, so I was walking into, we were doing this 24-hour conclave where we do audio drum for 24 hours. I can't explain it to you right now. And so, so as I walked in the space, She's over in the corner. She said, "Oh, the oracle has arrived." Or snide. You know how you know how, you know how your young youngins get, right? So I said, "Oh, that's a good one." So I'm the oracle. She's going to be the first woman of audio drama, right? We together will be the first couple of modern audio drama, right? Um, now the, she has to write these vows, and I got to do it. And then then she says, "Then she will show you how, how this goes." Then she she writes back. She says, "Are we getting married?" Not married, but married, because because you know I guess how you all you all be writing different. So she should be married, right? Uh, 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 then I write. Do you, are you start writing it? Then I, then I said uh, the first couple of audio drama, married we will be, right? But here's the funny. There's another thing that I wrote. Uh, oh, then at the end I said, so I'm anxiously awaiting the vow. She's got to do this writing, right? You come up with. Uh, that will that will set us on our merry way. So now, see, she, now, so what's happening? You, you, let me try to break this down. So audio drama becomes like a parallel universe, 
or like a multiverse. I just saw X Men, not X Men, uh, um, uh, Dead Man, Dead Deadpool, and X Men, and, and and Wolverine. Okay. Right, and, and, you know, it's, it's wild stuff happens there. So I'm thinking like, this is so interesting, because we can now, as we develop audio drama in Dumbaza, which will be different than any audio drama any place else in the world. I've done, I've done audio drama all over the world. We're going to make it official. So they're, 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 if I do this the way I, I'm thinking of doing it, what will happen is we can replicate this. So every place we go, I, wanna, I always like the male and female energy. So I will insist that we have writing teams of men, you know, well, male and female, and then they will be a couple. They will be the, 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 the woman and the oracle, if you want to put it that way. The bride and the groom, I don't know how to say it. I want to say bride and groom, like that. And, say, and, and so that's how, that's how we will do it, because I need, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer, and there, even when I was arts director, I made sure when I put new programs on the air, had a male, male and female energy in that, in that program, you know? I always insisted on that. And it, had nothing, it has nothing to do with being politically correct. I'm talking about energy now, you know? I'm talking about vibration, I'm talking about life, you know? So I, I, I'm on that level. I'm, I'm this whole thing about you gotta have so many women, so many men. Yeah, well, is that woman, is that woman qualified? It was Jim Trainer. It used to be, in my, in my department when I was arts director, people would come trying to be arts director. I said, well, can you edit tape? And they would go like, well, you know, you understand, brother, I can't do that. No, can you edit tape? What skill, no, what skill do you have? That's, 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 that's what I'm trying, that's what we're doing in Lahore House. What skills do you have? Oh, you're not doing anything? Well, then dig, you're going to dig over here because we're going to plot this like this. No, we don't do roles like the colonizers. Do. We're going to do some meandering snake-like uh, uh, things. You know, we're going to do some circles, you know, like that. So everything we do, we, um, I'm trying to tap them. I'm trying to get them to go back to what their, answer, what, what their, what, what, what their lineage says. Not, not when their lineage was, was interrupted by the colonizer. You know, because when, when, when the colonizer came, what, what, what did they do? Oh, you sit in these rows and you're going, I'm a, I'm, I'm a pearl before a swine. I'm, I'm the big teacher, I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna pour this knowledge into you. Well, before, before they came, you're sitting around trees and then, you know, you, you just have a conversation. That was education. So why, why are you gonna throw that out and embrace, uh-huh, I don't understand that. Why would you embrace something that's not of your lineage? You, you're going to tell me that your thousands of your lineage is less worthy than their, what, 60 years, uh, maybe 100 years of brainwashing? It don't make no sense to me. So my, my, what I have to do, I have to tap into their lineage, into to something that goes, that, 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 that goes into their, 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 their past. Like, if, are you close enough? What are you? You're close. Okay, so which, 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 give me your clan name. Hit it. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Into the microphone. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that you have a rich history. Some people know more about Jesus's lineage than they do about their own lineage. And in each one, in fact, I give you, I give you an assignment. I give, I give everybody an assignment. I give you an assignment. Go to. Go, I want you to next time you have a family gathering, even before then, start talking to the elders and find out all those people in the lineage that you've been you've been listening. Find out some 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 people in there. They could be, they could be distinguished people, criminals. It doesn't matter, right? And then once you take and write a poem using all those names and create a poem about that, create a story about each one of them. Bring it, make it a modern story. You see? Okay, let's, I'll do it. Let's, 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 let's talk about culture. Yeah, you, you remind me about culture. Culture. Um, and bring it back to food. Mm. So what unique food practices? Um, on dishes did you discover like during your travels um, no it's not safe during your travels during your stay in South Africa and how did you incorporate those dishes or those food types into your diet currently it's interesting you say that because uh, part of in my, in my maternal side uh, I have a Gullah Geechee and that, that, that's uh, very African it's from South Carolina uh, and a lot of the dishes that we have in, uh, in the black culture, if you want to say, called the black culture, in the states, you know, the same as so you have here. You know, it's it's weird. You know, yeah, it's 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 you you can, you can see the similarities. If I if I if my grandma used to make red rice, I love red rice. 
right? Well, you know, little variations, and that's just like you know, uh, um, um, uh, what, what's what's who do the the, the not Nigerians, yeah, the night the uh, the uh, oh man, what am I talking? The Senegalese and whatever they fight over the the, the that that dish that they did. It's the same thing, you know. Um, the the how you cook, I guess. Let me put it this way. I understand what you're trying to say. What dishes? Ah, you know, you can just look look up dishes like that. If you if we have okra, you, you're going to cook okra. There's only so many different ways you're going to cook okra. Like we just had at, at the food in, at the food in Dava, they had uh, they, they had uh, shakalaka. I like shakalaka. I love shakalaka. Right. So I went to the chef and I said, Hey, how do you make this shakalaka? So she told me how to make the shakalaka. And all she did was, all you can do, I can, I can all I have to do is just take a chakalaka from the can and soup it up. And I think that's what happens. I think, I understand what, you, what you're asking, but I'm trying to say that food is basic. There's only so many ways you can cook, roast, or whatever, a chicken. You know what I mean? There's only so many ways, you know, you can take a, a, a cow tongue and, 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 and you, you boil it, really, with you, with you, whatever it is. You know, only so some, only some, some many, um, uh, what do you call that, um, uh, um, uh, peppers or carrots or whatever that you put into a stew. In 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 Dimbaza, what I like to do, we have a pressure cooker. What I like to do, I'll take lentils, right? It will take. Uh, we only eat, eat meat like once a week. Like I'll take. Dimbaza has a great. Dimbaza sausage. Wow, Dimbaza sausage. And I, I I do lamb. I don't really do this other stuff, right? So I'll take some lamb, some um, Dimbaza sausage, piece of lamb, right? I'll take. Uh, Lentils, chocolate, put in the pressure cooker. Oh, what a meal. Oh, what a meal. Oh, my goodness, you know. But it's, it's cooking is cooking. I, I, let me, oh, let me, let me say it this way, Go, going back to my grandmother. Like I said, my grandmother was like an incredible cook. Now, you say, oh, everybody says that. Oh, I can prove it because like, we grew up Catholic. And, every, and, every, every, and the, the, the priests would come around, you know, to visit the parishioners. And I'm telling you, they would always go to my grandmother's house first because, to, to be fed because she was just that good. And, and, and so say she's cooking on the stove, and I say, oh, Grandma, what you cooking? She said, food. No, you, know, you, you don't know black <laughs> Black women, older, you know, grandmas, or, or they say big mamas, they, they have a certain way of doing it, right? She said, food. Well, can't you tell me? You got eyes. You just look for yourself. <laughs> God. But... What I realized, what she did, and that we all need to do, and it's hard to do in this particular world, she cooked with love. That's the only way I can explain it. Of course, it's the same, she get the same cut of meat that whatever, or the same, or, 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 or like I said, the same government cheese, or the same, you know, a, 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 milli, a, a, a cornmeal, or whatever it is. She make a crumb cake, the best crumb cake ever. How did that happen? You're using the same ingredients. It's just eggs, you eat, you eat, huh? You know? Because it's love. So when I approach things, you know, I don't let material things block when I'm cooking something. I don't let material things block me. I don't let no bad vibes. As I, say, I don't let no bad vibes into the room. I'm, I'm burning incense, you know what I mean? And I'm trying to be in a space I, I cool out because I'm very, I'm very emotional. I'm very high strung, right? And the littlest thing can set me off. The littlest injustice can set me off. So when I get into the hotel house, I make sure everything is cool. And when I start making stuff, I, I, I patiently cut. You know, I patiently cut. That that's it's like a therapy for me. And I used to be. Uh, I, I did craft service for the Sopranos, you know, TV thing, Soprano. I did craft service for, for like two and a half years, whenever it was. Seasons like the end of season two, season three, part of season four. Anyway, that was the best seasons. Why? Because I'm doing the craft service. I'm giving them love. Oh, you don't believe me? Oh, yeah, doubt me. Oh, okay, doubt if you want. Go back and look and see what the best seasons of, of <laughs> Sopranos were. Anyway, and, and, and because of, uh, I guess that's another thing. I guess I'm, because, because of craft service, I learned a lot about food. Preparing food, uh, uh, fermentation, oh, things, that, how to buy stuff, the cut, you know, you, you can learn like cuts and stuff like that, but it's still going to end up, how much love can you put into this that you're creating? I mean, it's, 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 it's like art, like anything, it's like dancing. 
you know, it's the, how much love is on that stage. I guess I shouldn't say love because people get, okay, let me go. Let me do it this way. I'm going to put it this way. And, uh, you know, you can stop me anytime you want because I know we run out of time probably. But when, if I say to you, I say, Tandy, I love you. You're going to think, I don't know what you're going to think, right? But what you don't understand is that when I say love, for me, love is the creator. Love, I'll, 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 use, I'll use a Christian. Love is God. God is love. So when I say I love you, right, I'm saying I guide you. I guide you. My, my, my aspect or my, my tentacles of God is talking to the tentacle, to the same, the same tentacle of God is that, that, that's in you. You see? So, so, what, so what's, what's really happening is, is for me to give, for me to, 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 to take that, that uh, creative force, that, that, that great spirit, I like to say because I'm through my American anything, that great spirit, that great spirit, and I constantly try to make that great spirit greater and, and greater. And as I make it greater, the great spirit says, oh, okay, I see what you want. So the great spirit will get me here on time, get me there on time, or give me what I need here, give me what I need there. Don't you need money? No, I, don't need, money. I need the great spirit. The great spirit will provide for me to get to where I need to go. So, so if I say I love you, I'm saying I guide you. And I'm saying that, and, and, and if you receive that, if, if my great spirit is talking to, 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 to the aspect, if the aspect of the great spirit in me is talking to the aspect of the great spirit in you, then the love becomes bigger. Then we can, then we can basically, uh, well, we can, uh, as they say, uh, uh, dare I be, move mountains. You read a lot. Yeah, well, I, I don't read as much as I, I should. I used to read a whole lot more. But you read. I think you read more than most people. Uh, you um, you listen to podcasts. You are like I would say you are very aware of what's happening in in the world. That's true. You spoke about food and what is in the food. You are aware of what is in the food that we consume. Yes. Um, as as the world and also in South Africa, bringing back to South Africa. In the townships, there was a certain period where um, children were getting sick and people were getting sick because of the food that they were buying in the mm. spaza shops. Mm. As, as you would Outdated. Yeah, yes, because it was all food. So you are aware of what's happening within the, the food system in South Africa, and I think you've had experience also in the food system in the U.S. and some parts of the world. So my question is, like, as an elderly person, because I am aware that you you do try to eat healthy and you do try to, to consume food that is good for for you but then as an elderly person what challenges do you face or do you come across in South Africa within the food system where you're like okay this is a challenge for me because I would like this but then this is not this is not happening I think what you, 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 you you're saying it right you're saying the system mm. any system especially if it's centralized can be controlled and like, say for instance, like, like uh, when I grew up, there was, there, there was bread, right? And the bread had a certain whatever in it. But then, then to, 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 to make it so they could be more economical, for, for the company to make more, more money, they put bromide in the bread. Bromide is not good for you, you see? Um, so, so what they do is they, they find uh, things that will, uh, that will, that will, they take the brand. You fall in love with the brand. Then they change the ingredients of the brand. You suddenly you don't know that it's changed, but you feel well. This is this is my brand. You know this is um, this, this is what I grew up with. You know it's like it's like when the when when the COVID hit. Somebody said to me, "Oh, but aren't you going to take a shot?" I said, "No." I said, "Well, you know when we was young, we had polio and they took the shot." I said, "Yeah, but back then the pharmaceuticals wasn't trying to kill you. They weren't trying to make money." So you think they're going to give you something that's going to? No, they need to. They need to get you on the respiratory system. So they need to get you. They need to get you on the dialysis, so they can make more money off of your corpse. I mean, your almost corpse. I mean, your, you see. So the the scheme, the system, wants to maintain you at a level that they can continue continue to extract from you what they need, and they need more moolah, 
<laughs> want money so that they can that they can continue to brainwash you and to and, and, and to substitute stuff that's no good for you. That's what they do. I don't have particular challenges because I sort of I, like I said I've, I've been at this consciousness. I mean, a, well, my my grandmother's one thing, but but in the '80s I really studied a lot of this stuff and read a lot of stuff. So what happens is I know circad I know the rhythms. I know what to eat. I know that the way the body is built. Uh, that you know you should do you should uh, do fruit in the morning. Wash your fruit with with. Uh, with baking soda, you don't forget all that vinegar and all that. Just wash it, wa rinse it with baking soda, right there. You do your fruit in the morning, around about mid, and you try to eat it with the sun, you know, around midday. You can have a, a larger meal, or somewhere between midday and four o'clock. You can have a larger meal. Two meals a day is ideal, especially for when you're older. But if you, if whatever your job is, you got to do some other stuff, or you got to eat more meat, that you used to do that. I mean, I have a thing where, like I said, we eat meat maybe on a Wednesday. Right? Then maybe on a Friday we might have it, might not. Then on the weekend, you know, but I usually eat meat one, maybe once a week. I maybe eat fish, whatever have you. I'm, I'm starting to uh, say, well, because I'm losing my muscle mass as older, I'm, I'm starting to say, well, let me just do more eggs, you know, uh, poached. But I like, I would rather have poached and hard or soft boiled eggs rather than fried because, oh, that, oh, that's woo, what am I talking about? The biggest thing, I think your biggest problem is the oils you use. These oils, are, they're terrible. All this other stuff, I mean, you should be doing only, only coconut oil, butter, or ghee. Those are the only oil you should be cooking in or using. Anything else, and I'm not talking about taking a little bit of avocado oil or, 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 or what do you call that, olive oil and putting it on your salad. That's, eh, uh, eh, eh, whatever you want to do with that. Right? Wash your salad. But I'm talking about this other stuff. There's vegetable oils, this uh, with canola oil, all the stuff that people are frying in, their fries, ah, e, ah, uh, e. But it tastes good. No, it don't taste good. Then the salt and sugar, sugar it up so much. You're not tasting it. You're tasting the salt and sugar. Ah. Man, I, look. They got to have the chicken McNuggets. Really. No, they don't. Make your own. I don't know what to tell you. My so point, you make your own food, basically. All I'm saying is that people need to... Look, what's that saying? You know more about your car than you know about your body. Mm -hmm. You know more about this than that. You know more about that than who's. You know what I mean? So what happens is, do you, if, if, you, if you love yourself, or you should love yourself, then you should do the best for yourself. Well, let me go back to the, the that whole thing I was talking about. The uh, 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 the great spirit is in me, and the great spirit helps me. Well, I want to. I want to. I want to. The great spirit is uh, uh, along for a ride. I mean, the great spirit. Don't, the great spirit don't have no arms. The great spirit don't have no legs. Don't have no mouth. Can't talk. Right. You know. But they, but they can experience. The great spirit say, Hey, I let you through. Now, let me hit your ride with you. I just want to have this human experience that you're having. Now, why would you? Now, the, remember, you came out when you came out to your, your, your mother's, whatever. You, you, know, she, you yelled, you had that vibration. And you were basically telling the Grace Spirit, hey, I came through, I'm really nice, that's really good. And then the Grace Spirit said, hey, I, look, look that's, that's great. But can you do me a solid? I want to have this human experience, you know? So can I ride along with you? Now, now your obligation is to make sure the Grace Spirit is having a great ride. If you're putting poison in your body, if you if you say oh no but I gotta look like a township mama because all the other township mamas look like that mm -hmm. but, 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 but uh, my, my ankles are swollen up and uh, as soon as I re as soon as I get my retirement check I'm gonna go on dialysis well do you think the Great Spirit want that ride is that the ride the Great Spirit want I'm just asking you know I'm, I'm asking for a friend <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> you know so it it drives me does the Great Spirit does the Great Spirit really want to get, forget the great spirit. Does, do, do you really want your child to be sucking on that sugar? You know? Do you really want your child to have what Nestle's have given, given you as a powder that you put, mix with the, 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 the bad water, the DT who, the, 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 and then, you know, then that child grows up 
you know, sickly, and then you got to put that child in their hospital. No, come on now. It don't make no sense. You should be breastfeeding that child until he's like three years old. Damn it. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I apologize. I, I take that back. Oh, no, what it hurts. He's biting my, he's biting on my nipple. It hurts. So what? You, 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 you shouldn't open your legs then. You, know, you want to be hurt. Let's move on to the next question. All right, what's the next question? What advice would you give other elderly people when Elders. it comes to how they approach their diet? Let's stop calling them. Let's, uh, let me, here's Ancient advice. Ancient people. No, no, no. Let me, I call my people the wisdoms. The wisdoms. What, 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 what advice would I give the wisdoms? What, what advice would you give to the wisdoms? Well, I would give the wisdoms this advice. Whatever you learn, continue, unlearn that, and augment it with some new knowledge. There's new knowledge out here all the time, all the way. You're not going to listen. You, 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 you just, people are not going to listen. But you, you know when something's right, wrong, or indifferent. So I'm not saying read necessarily, but there are people you, you should be trusting. I'm not talking about your preacher, you know. Or, or, I'm not talking about anybody that wants to make money off of you. So I would say reevaluate re what you've been doing. There, there are people that, that, that as, you, as you go along and you start vetting people, there are people that you should be able to trust. So, so, so do that. Trust some other, tr trust some other peoples. Because the people that, that made you, that, 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 that telling you not to walk, to slow down, to sit down, they're wrong. You should, the human body is meant to move. We were sitting here a long time. I should have, I should have got up and started doing something. I should have, even even here I can. There's, there's, there's little things you can do with your, with your with your feet. You know, even as you're sitting down, you can curl your ankles. I don't know, do something. You know, you know, go blow your nose. Get, get up, say say excuse me. I had to go out to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom, blow your nose. But but you but you didn't have no snot. You know, that's blow it anyway. Just get an excuse to just get a, get a, get a, walk out the way. You know, come on. I understand. Support that. But 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 I think the thing really is is to is to is not, oh, let me give you this advice. Don't stop snacking. Stop snacking on those chips and re, oh, read two things. Read the labels of what you're eating so you know what you're eating. That, that therefore, if, it's, if therefore you can't blame nobody but yourself. If you can't read, then have somebody read it to you. And if you can't research, have somebody research it for you. You got you got grandchildren. You got you got, you got children. Say what does what does this mono who they cast to? What does this mean? Let let them look it up on their device. Well, you know it means that uh, we you gonna die. You keep on reading this. <laughs> you gonna eat this. You gonna be gone. You know you understand what I'm saying? There's always help. I think what's the biggest problem is that we lost a sense of community. Again, back to that uh, communalism. You can embrace look count. Ubuntu cannot exist in a capitalistic society. That's my statement. If you give, give so you have to have communalism. I didn't say communism. I didn't say fascism. I didn't say socialism. I didn't say Americanism. I didn't say Europeanism. I didn't say Africanism. I say you got to have communalism. No matter where you are, your community. Your you start with your community. Get your community solid. Then your community can then then uh, go on to the world. That's what I. That's what I do with audio drama. You know what I mean? We're gonna get our little community so tight, so informed. Because remember, to do an audio, you gotta write, which means you gotta research. So the presenter, you gotta, and then we, we have certain rules. Like the, we we have certain rules in audio drama. You can't curse. Right? That's only because it comes comes from radio. You can go into anybody's living rooms, you know, uninvited. So so you don't want to, whatever. And you can't say anything against the government that 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 that, that you whatever. Against the constitution of whoever you you're, you're with, now, I, I always spend. I say the culture to which you to which you're to which you're you're uh, you're existing in. So so your your culture in Saudi Arabia might be different than the culture in uh, in, in Madagascar. So when, if I'm in Madagascar, I'm going to do certain things and or not do certain things or teach certain things or do certain things. And if I'm in Saudi Arabia, I'm going to do other things. If I'm in India, I'm going to do other things. I'm going to respect the culture on that. You know. It tests me a lot of times when I travel, when people, people don't go someplace and sit for a while, just see what's going on, how people shake hands, how people greet, what people are wearing, you know. So you got these people coming there, and you're going to some country, and you got your, 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 you got your cleavage all down to your navel, you know what I mean? Why? You got the shorts all the way up, why? 
If nobody else is doing that around you, why would you do that? And, and, and if, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Now, if you, there are places you can go to, to where to, I'm, I'm not too sure, but even just the way you talk, everything like that, you have to, you have to, I'm not saying being a comedian, but you have to be patient and, and go with an open heart with some, with some love. If you go with love and understanding, then you're going to be all right. But you can't travel with, with your own, you know, your own bias. You can't, it, it's back to, back to that, what's that, the golden rule? If, if you don't want to be punched in the mouth, don't punch, don't punch nobody in the mouth. If you don't want to be disrespected, don't, don't disrespect anybody. Simple as that. Thank you. I think we are going to wrap up. Wrap so up. With that. Do we have a wrap party? We are going to wrap. Let's wrap. Oh, okay. Okay, no, I can't wrap. Okay. <laughs> One final question. You, you speak about your grandmother mm. and her cooking. Uh, the any dishes that you used to cook that you still hold very close to your heart and you still try to have and make even today? I, um, I, that was, that was, it was a question that one of the Dava things, and I, I, I mentioned both of them already. Uh, I, I like the way she cooked her tongue, I like the way she did her crumb cake. The problem is the coffee cake, the crumb cake. The problem is my sister was supposed to get that recipe and my sister neglected to get the recipe, so I don't know how she made the crumb cake, but I'm not really a, 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 a baking like that guy. But I would say, uh, I am my grandmother's grandchild, let me put it that way. I know I don't mention my mother and my, 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 my uh, won't get into all that stuff, but uh, I think she cooked patiently. So I do, I cook patiently, and she prepared again with love. So I prepare patiently, and I cook patiently. That's, that's, that's what I can, that's what I would, that's what I would say. Whatever I'm doing, I mean, I have, I'll, I'll cut a carrot a certain way, then I'll do it a, a different way. I'll cut, you know, I'll do baby marrow a certain way, you know. I'll do whatever I'm doing. I do, I do, a, I, I pay attention. I touch every, I touch all my food. I'm, again, I'm giving that food that love. So it doesn't matter what it is, you know. So I, I guess that, that's the only thing I can say. I only can say I, 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 I'm grateful that that, then came out of the ground, which means that I don't, I stay away from processed stuff. Because that, it, it may have come out of the ground, but then, then the colonizer then, 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 then beat up on it and then changed it in such a way that they're trying to colonize my body. There's enough to colonize to try to colonize my mind. It took me a long time to get the colonizer out of my mind. So you know I don't want the colonizer in my body. Simple as that. So that's what I would say, you know. I think I got a selfie of you, so I don't need to get a selfie of you. But uh, it's been a blast, as Thank we say. Thank you. Oh, Anthony. Thank you so much. And uh, there will be a follow-up interview to us. Yeah, well, you know, if you, if, you, if, you, if you follow me on Instagram, so I'm, at the end of September, I'm supposed to go states for a few months, got to go vote. And then I come back. End of September, you go? Going to the states? I, so, I suppose so. My, my sister don't send me the ticket. I ain't going. You have the ticket. When are you going to go for it? No, no, you understand. I don't need to go to the state. Oh. I, I'm spending. I'm buying a ticket to India for in the, the, the year. I'm not going. You, you want me in the states? You. you, 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 you Why are you avoiding the states? What did the states do to you? What? I, why? Why? I'm not interested in the states. I'm interested. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in Southern Africa. That's, 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 that's what you said in one of your videos. It's like. I avoid the state at all costs. Yes, I do. <laughs> Why? I do. <laughs> Why is that? I, I love talking to my people because you know we, we have a code or whatever have you. But you know, them them them, them folks. I mean, you know, they done lost their minds. You know, we're gonna vote for this black woman. Oh, what? She ain't even black. You gonna vote for who? You gonna vote for this? Uh, no, stop. You know, yeah. oh, we, we we don't like this person. Oh, look, y'all you do what you want. I have a campaign, by the way. The campaign is, uh, I, want, I want people to write in on the ballot, reparations. That's what I'm doing. I'm writing in reparations. I'm not voting for, for president, I'm writing in reparations, you know. I might vote, vote down ballot for some other stuff, but I'm going to write in reparations. And then, 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 then if somebody else that I don't like on there, I'm going to write in no war. Hmm. I'm principled, you know. Sure. They can't pull the wool over. Hey, the, the colonizer can pull the wool over some people's eyes. The colonizer can colonize some people's mind. But I've been de I Look, I've been in the belly of the beast. I served the United States Air Force. I know what they can do to you. You know? I, the, sure. 
Not me. Can't get me. I know too little. You know too much. I know too little. <laughs> you know a lot. So yeah, so I'm trying to say the end of September or the, or the, or, the, or, the, or the, when I come back, like a, you're gonna come back to Cape Town. I always come through Cape Town. Oh, okay. I fly, yeah, I, I fly out of Cape Town. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't fly out of Joburg. Okay, yeah, yeah. Cape Town is a nice place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.